Hello, and welcome back to Roslyn. This is, uh, this will be episode 13 if you're watching on YouTube. Thanks for joining me live on Twitch if you're here, all one of you. Um, so, quick update on the city, honestly. Um, I am finally through the backlog of footage I recorded before my most recent move. Um, and in fact, the last episode that I had, uh, I apparently forgot to save the game. So I'm going to be doing a re... This is going to be episode 13. It's going to be a redo of the prior episode 13. Um, and if you're live with me today, we'll probably do episode 14 live on Twitch as well. Come check me out. Uh, hoping to get regular streaming on the weekends, maybe Saturday or Sunday morning. Um, so yeah, stop by sometime. Anyway, let's get into, uh, I do want to review a couple of things that have changed. So, episode 12 left off, the year was 2030, it's now 2032. You can see the surplus, uh, that the city has financially has enhanced considerably and is coming in quite profitably. Um, and population is just north of 6,000. So there's been some substantial growth to the city in a number of key ways, and that's just a factor of me letting it run, um, which is not super exciting to put out as a video, but is one of the best strategies I think you can use to really advance your gameplay rapidly. Um, is, you know, uh, if, if you've got a way where, you know, if you want to, Look at something else, be on your phone, read a book, um, answer some emails, uh, you know, if you've got a way to get your console build running just in the background while you're not spending money by building anything, um, then, you know, even just going into screensaver mode with it, letting it hang out, um, that's how you can end up with this sort of budget to work with. Um, so... Over there, we're gonna go over there briefly. That's where we're gonna try and meet some of the residential demand. Before I get to that though, I did notice as I was playing uh, earlier and I had to save and reload because I don't have any um, fire helicopter depots yet. Fire coverage isn't bad. It's not uh, optimal, obviously. It's a lot of red in here. Um, some places we could think about some more fire stations we've got budget for it but there's so many trees um, and as they continue to landscape it's going to add more and more trees and those are going to be a huge fire hazard um, so the problem is that your fire trucks can't get to trees that are just like off the road so I'm going to need to drop in use fire helicopter depot just to handle any um, fire situations that trucks can't get to that's ultimately what the helicopters are for um, we'll see if those trees back there survive oh I think this guy's about to take off let's see if we can catch him in action here uh, there we go okay yeah, I see a fire icon over there, so let's see what happens here. I'm going to speed up time. So, placing this close to the water is the way to go. Uh, you can also build in artificial water sources. I've done that in other cities in the past. It's a little bit of a pain in the neck. It just depends on how much, like, that on-off on icon, on -off icon, like the one that's up there um, on the hill, bothers you. Okay, returning to depot. I guess the trucks took care of that fire, so I'm not going to get to see the fire trapper in action. Good test run, though, uh, making sure we get water. I'm sure the fishing boats are going to love helicopters coming down in here and scaring away all the fish, but they'll deal with it. They're fishing all the way out there, so... Yeah, so let's get into... Um, this residential development here. So you can see I have extended 
a couple of just straight blocks where I was able to, but then to account for the terrain, started to get a little more creative with how the roads look. Um, and what I'm trying to emulate here is uh, how in some cities on the outer edges, as you get up into higher elevations, you might see some winding roads. And that has like safety implications. These kinds of like even slight switchbacks are gonna make this way safer than just a straight uphill here. Um, sorry, I live on a busy city street. If you can hear the motorcycles going by, um, but yeah, it's just a straight downhill here would be intense. And what I've noticed, uh, having just moved to a much hillier area, is that. The use of switchbacks, and you can also think of this even, and I hesitate to put it this way, but think of um, the hills around Los Santos in GTA 5. Um, how the switchbacks work up through there, the fake Beverly Hills or whatever it is, um, and are able to create a lot of... Space to zone for residential um, in sort of unique ways. So that's what I'm trying to do right here. And I'm trying to give myself plenty of space on either side of these. Um, and I'll get into why on that, of course. It basically comes down to that is the best way to ensure that as, because as the houses zone in on these, it is going to flatten their flat. Um, so, trying to keep that in mind, I think one of the best ways to account for that, because I am still going to want to be creative back here with like fencing and stuff potentially, um, is just to try and create some space. Sorry, I'm trying to talk into this at the same time. It's not voiceover anymore. Um, it's kind of pretty close there. I'm not sure about that. Although we probably will want some other kind of connection with this right here. I'm not sure if that's the best spot for it, though. I feel like this might really be the place, because that's going to feed in better over there. And it still gives us enough space off of that one. Okay. Just try to come in here in a couple more spots where I think it might make sense. Because the other thing is it might be wise to think about putting some more industrial, like maybe break tuck back right in here too. Just so there's some more jobs once we get to that point. Okay, I'm gonna come through with my favorite fence now. Uh, and I might just leave it off of Park Street for now, honestly. I'm not sure what's gonna happen there. So, just coming through with the Ultimate Fencing Simulator 9000 here which is what I call the vanilla console fence building tools. Um, oh, I'm off. How did I do that? Okay. Oh, right, because I want to leave room for that to expand, so... That's actually a good note. I should really do that before anything else, I think, here is to widen this road. Um, I'm going to pull these one lane avenues, or two lane avenues, excuse me, but it's one lane each way, but it takes up the width of the four lane road, which I really like. So I'm just going to have this snake up through here so that eventually, if this needs to become a four lane road, it can't. Oh wow, that's not any good. Um, and it will 
will show us for sure where we've got our problems. This all looks okay, I think. It's a little, little steep there. Better. Ooh, it's still really rough. It's okay. It's just part of the process here. Okay. I mean, it's not ideal, but it could be worse. not too bad. Definitely I'm not going to be able to pick that road up down there anymore though, so we can figure out where some of these things are going to go, I think. This is the tricky part about laying out the roads on uh, console, I think, is that you never... You, you really got to take the time to figure it out, I guess, is what I would do. Oops, and I am going to go ahead and turn off the day-night cycle so I'm not building in the dark. Excuse me for forgetting to do that. So what if we feed that, like, right there? Very sort of nice exclusive feels to some of the housing up here. Go ahead and wrap this off here. test drive. Okay, so coming down here, it's kind of nice, you can see a little bit of the city there. Maybe it's even better to just go straight to lane with this, because the trees really spoil the view there. Okay, just cruising right along. Not a great driver in this game. I'm fine in real life, I promise. Oop. Hit the wall. Oop. <laughs> Alright, well, I mean, this VW is just all over the road, so I don't even know what to do with that. Wow! Alright, so... The fact that I was even able to stay on the road at all says to me that this is fine. I think now it's just a matter of upgrading some more of these roads. So, we could go with some nice tree-lined streets. That would prevent people from parking on some of the more intense hills here. I'm also tempted to just... 
have at it. Let's just get this in here and see what it starts to look like. Some of these junctions could become problematic again. That, yeah, see right there? Instead. Yeah, that looks a little better, I think. There's going to be a lot of fine-tuning. This is a lot more complicated of a layout than a grid. And it takes more time because of that. And ultimately, I think it pays off because we end up with a much more interesting part of the city. certainly is labor intensive. Why would there be a truck out here already, I wonder? I want this one to stay low with this one right here, but that one could pop up, that's fine. In the meantime, oop, there's that, finally. Let's just wait and see what comes in there. Maybe I'll just let that whole corner get bigger. Okay. So, over there. Probably sneak a row of trees in between those fences now, I'm hoping. There we go. I'm just not sure how much I want to actually back onto Park Street there. So realistically, I should already be expanding that, probably. It's going to be major. No. Oh, that's just a bus making a turnaround. Okay. Go ahead and bring the water in right here. Okay, we just gotta remember not to build on that now. Put a fence like that. Is this so dead? No, it's not. Let's see. Going like 
this. Yeah, I'm fine with moving that off one. Great, there's a house popping in now. very experimental for me. I honestly don't do a lot of builds on this kind of terrain. side of Park Street it's going to feel distinct from Fairfield or anywhere else. And I think just off the top of my head I'm going to call this Eureka Slope in the hopes that because this is going to be a sort of experimental part of the build for me with all of the terrain um, that I'll get it I'll find it I'll have it Eureka so that's a little hopefulness on my part um, let's see so definitely seeing some more balance in the demand there I wonder what we could do to make this more attractive over here. This is not bad fire, yeah. I think we would benefit from a very old school firehouse right here. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, that was the right call for sure. Good to have one down here somewhere as well. Wonder where we could put that. I don't hate that. We're gonna have a bookstore and another little shop there. And it'll be on Felicity right off the factory. factory as well. Ooh. I feel bad for those folks who have to live right there then, but that's tempting for sure. Maybe just slip in a little one down there. Definitely be good to have one. Somewhere right in here. Path behind that. Honestly, this one be as good a place as any. And 
let's just check budget anytime doing fire stuff that'll eat up budget very quickly so let's look yeah it's like three thousand dollars worth of our expenses right now we've got plenty of cushions still i think let's see we're making bank on tax revenue right now a lot of level threes the residential there level twos and commercial level twos and industrial um, 500 bucks on the buses and I'm just very paranoid about fire safety if you let it it can ruin a lot for you Great, and this is starting to fill in now. So the real challenge is obviously going to be zoning in up here, honestly. Um, that's where I'm really going to be tested in terms of what I can do. Be wrapping up this episode shortly. I think before I go, I just wanted to um, make a little more space for some commercial here. Size it. Which is fine, honestly. Let's see what comes in. It doesn't look like it's going to be too tall. Let's store size that. Available. Yeah, that stayed nice and low. Totally fine with that. Yeah, this should go ahead, I think. And be. Well, this off. So yeah, there we go, bringing in some different looks there with the corner lots, I like that a lot. Alright, so this only added about 250 people maybe, if we account for the fact that we probably got some growth due to some upgrades in some other parts of the city. Go ahead and check housing levels. So a lot of level three. As we saw, that's where the bulk of the tax revenue is coming from. Is that a three? Yeah. So it's telling me increased land value. What's out here? So this is just education. That's just going to take time. Increasing educational capacity, of course, will help with that. Over here, I think. Yeah, that's just about land value. So that's going to be about potentially taking out some of the level three houses in order to turn some more of them into level fours because there's not a lot of developable space left over here. I mean, certainly could maybe do something right there that would help. Um, you know, if downtown becomes a three-star park, we might see a boost around the immediate area here. Sorry, I'm moving the camera awfully fast, aren't I? Um, but yeah, I think there's... You know, the city financially is quite healthy. Let's go to the bike right here. The city financially is quite healthy right now. Um, the big thing is just it's going to take time to do some of this residential zoning now that I'm getting into areas that don't have this kind of flatness that the bulk of Roslyn has had so far. Um, that said... There is still a lot of flat terrain out there. And what's coming up definitely soon in another episode is I'm going to expand a tile. 
I was thinking maybe I would try to wait and see if I could get two at once because I think there's two I really need together to make sense of where we're going to expand from here. Um, but if that doesn't play out, we may just have to see what happens. So, uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you're watching live on stream, I'm just going to take a quick break and I'll be back in 10-15 minutes. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, check back for another episode in a couple of days. Um, and I'll talk to you soon.